Good day, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is March 7, 2024. Here is another daily analysis, uh, starting with the S&P 500 as usual, four hours chart. Market just picked up the momentum. So I was uh, kind of like expecting market coming down to test this trend line, but the bullishness in the market is pretty strong. And you see that. So it seems like uh, market doesn't have, want to have any corrective move. So any kind of like a shallow dip will be bought by buyers. And right now we are just seeing a new all-time high today. And uh, right now seems like even uh, buyers are getting back to the market and don't wait even for kind of like a deeper corrective move to buy back. So they just keep the momentum higher. Still, momentum is pretty strong. And we'll see that there is no divergence here in MACD at least. RSI, yes, but everything should be fine. So sometime, sometimes probably in, uh, later March, we will see kind of like a deeper correction or not. But uh, I believe that I was waiting for this correction to come, but seems like market doesn't want to give us any opportunity for a deeper corrective move, something like a September. Uh, let me go to the daily chart. I'm going to show you what type of correction I'm just looking at. Something, something like this. So if it gives us a deeper correction, that would be a fantastic risk to reward. So everyone is saying, um, well, you were looking for, yeah, because risk to reward, it doesn't help me. Like if you just uh, want to buy here, where is your stop? Your stop is going to be here if market gives you kind of like a correction here and going up. So you will be stopped out. Uh, so that's why I'm just waiting for kind of like a pattern to forms in a good demand area something like this or something like this coming down here to a good demand area for next buying opportunity because that gives me kind of like a good risk to reward right now we don't have a good risk to reward market is just bouncing off sma 20 every single time when it touches s p 500 just close at 5145 right now new all-time high new closing all-time high and i should say we should give the market benefit of doubt for now uh, moving on to NASDAQ, which was kind of like a rocket star for today, but I'll look at four hours chart. So whenever it gets to this double top, it didn't go to new all-time high, just to go to this double top and then coming back down sharply. So market just uh, went above uh, 18,400 and then it comes down after that. So right now we are just seeing a corrective or kind of like a reaction to this top. So it doesn't give me anything. As long as we are above this pivot, we should be fine. But if we go below this pivot, then any pullback could be a sell to this pivot or even a deeper corrective move. Right now, as long as we are above this pivot, we should give market benefit of doubt. So we'll see how it goes. Tomorrow is going to be non-farm payroll. NFP number is coming and Pretty volatile session for the market is coming tomorrow. And next week is going to be a CPI. So everyone just, uh, again, keep an eye on the numbers. Job numbers are going to be very, very important for the next CPI number. Um, moving on to Dow Jones, which is uh, US 30. So uh, this one is lagging. This one does not help uh, like the other indexes. However, stochastic within this digestive move over the time, goes to some kind of like over sold condition. So this is a pretty nice scenario for another buying opportunity because uh, sometimes market just that gives us a good price-wise corrective move to the downside. Sometimes it's just going sideways consolidation. And this is the way we Dow. I know it's not like that. It's not like a typical flag or something like that that we see. But this is kind of like another flag which is exhaustive rally very very exhaustive going up but um this is kind of like a correcting over the time and you see that even rsi even a stochastic and even macd goes to kind of like a coiling up nicely for next buying opportunity so again this is kind of like a mixed signal for me because if dow goes to the rally this means money is coming back to the defensive which I believe money is coming to the defensive healthcare, utility. They are kind of like a rocking, I should say, uh, this week. I know NASDAQ was pretty positive. Semiconductors were positive. But Dow, money is coming to Dow for now. 
Gold new all time high, new closing all time high as well in daily charts. So gold hit my first target, which is 2160. Actually, the next one is 2180. So that is very, very important. 2180. And the next one is 2220. So I should say this is the level that I'm looking for. A kind of like a bigger correction is coming. And the correction is coming to 2100. I would say. This is going to be a fantastic buying opportunity for the next rally to the upside. So this is the way how it goes with gold. Gold is very, very boring. Sometimes it goes to multi-months consolidation since December until beginning of March. But look at after that. So within three months, it didn't do anything. But in just five days, it goes all the way up to like, I should say, it's kind of like a 7% up for March. So this is phenomenal. This is amazing. And I should say gold after this corrective move, potential correction to 2100, you should be ready for higher high. And I should say 2220 and 2250 based on the daily chart is coming. I have a higher price for gold this year, uh, specifically when we are getting to the weekly chart, but this is a daily chart. So based on the daily chart, 22, 20, 22, 50, that's going to be my ultimate target, at least for now. Moving on to crude, which had a negative day. So crude had like a very, very doji uh, day, still holding up this area. This is kind of like another scenario that I'm seeing here for crude. If it goes below this, these two pivots, uh, or trend line, we can go down, test this pivot. As long as we are above 72, we are okay. But if we go below 72, any pullback could be a sell. I would say this is a sell as well. So this is kind of like a nice supply area. We are just getting there. And that's why crude is just consolidating. But this form of consolidation is not a form of breakout, at least uh, from my knowledge. Uh, this is kind of like an exhaustive and it can go down. If it goes down to test this trend line, we should see the reaction. If it doesn't have a good bounce to the upside, we should see some kind of like a sell-off going all the way down to 61 to 63. Moving on to individual names, starting with BIT. BIT had a positive day, almost 2% like to the upside, closing a 61,000, uh, uh, sorry, 67,381. Not a bad session. Yield is down today. So yield is crashing. So I know Federal Reserve, like uh, Jay Powell and the other uh, chairmans, they were talking like a hawkish, but they were signaling to the market that eventually we are going to do rate cut. So market is expecting rate cut is coming soon, probably April or so, but they were pretty, I should say, honest. And they were pretty straight that they're not going to do rate cut soon. Potentially, the first rate cut is going to be summertime, and then the next one is going to be prior election, I should say, September. So I'm not expecting rate cut is coming in April. If that happens, that's going to be surprising, to be honest. It depends on the job number tomorrow and also inflation rate tomorrow. But they kind of like a warning about the real estate or housing price because they are kind of like afraid of cutting the rate is going to escalate the real estate price which they don't want to have it. So they kind of like a push uh, onto the metal, uh, pedal onto the metal to see how, how they can uh, suppress the uh, price for the real estate. So we will see, but yield is coming down. This is obvious sell. So that's why gold is going up. So this is kind of like another scenario that I'm pretty bullish in gold and gold miners, treasuries, Going down today, um, it was kind of like a hitting this important trend line here. This is very, very um, technical, I should say, resistance here. So if you see some kind of like this top information here, this is kind of like a sell. So if it goes to here, that would be a fantastic. If it does on the breakout, it's going to go all the way up to 105. I'm just looking for another dip for a fantastic buying opportunity. I have TLT treasury in my portfolio, almost 5 to 6% of my portfolio is treasury. So for those ones who are my subscriber, they know that 5 to 6% is kind of like a decent amount in my portfolio. I'm not going more than 6 7%. So I'm kind of like a bullish on this. And I hope that if it gives us another buying opportunity, we will take it. But if it doesn't, we are we are invested in it, so we can't go higher. VIX coming down today, obviously, 
uh, market had a nice move to the upside. So why VIX is going higher? But look at the change here. So just eight cents change to the downside. It's not that much. So I should say this is very, very important um, to see if it goes down, we'll see another spike. $15.50 to $16 is going to be a good one. But if it goes above this, you can see $20. VIX is coming down the road. Moving on to Dixie, Dixie 20 um, just down as yield is coming down. Mark, a magma indicator is up. Uh, Apple is sick. So Apple is shooting to the downside and it's coming to my level. So this is pretty interesting to see because I'm just looking for Apple to go down to this level. So one, 150 to 160 to 165 is gonna be a great buying opportunity. I'm just waiting for this one. Amazon three dollar up today, not a bad price action. Meta new all time high, sixteen dollar to the upside. This is stock. This is stock doesn't want to stop. Microsoft a uh, seven dollar to the upside after hours just uh, took a hit, uh, but um, one point seventy five percent to the upside. Google pretty nice move to the upside. Google can go higher to one thirty eight, but that's the maximum level. Look at this consolidation breakout to the downside. So this is kind of like a test for another deep down to here. I should say I would be buyer on Google when it gets here, 122 to 125. So not sooner than that. Netflix optic today, like the other uh, stocks, uh, Tesla, $2 up, not a bad session. Recapture its pivot still needs to go higher because this is kind of like ugly, I should say. There is a divergence, huge divergence here. This is a good double bottom formation. I don't know if this is double bottom, but very, very good divergence here in a good demand area. So we will see. Semiconductors, rock a start today, but look at after hours. After hours, they took a hit, very sharply took a hit. Socks, the same pattern here. Taiwan Semiconductor, new all-time high coming down. Even after hours goes down $3 more down to the downside. AMD close 75 cents up but look at after hours if we count after hours amd is supposed to be negative day right so nvidia is the only name just to keep going higher and higher 4.47 percent to the upside pretty close to 1000 nvidia after hours took a hit a bit not that much texas instrument this one took a hit as well so it goes higher just price or needle this habit but coming down sharply as well Lamb research new all time high, but after hours it goes lower as well. So it's not new all time high anymore, but would take it. Um, moving on to XLF, which is a financial spider, six cents down. KBE, large cap bank ETF, uh, seven cents up today. KRE, seven cents up today. JP Morgan, dollar uh, 66 cents down. Goldman Sachs, this is kind of like a typical scenario and it had. Um, 396, 400, it's going down. Bank of America, 21 cents up. So we'll see how it goes. Wells Fargo as well. So this is kind of like a shooting a start. This is kind of like an exhaustive rally. If it goes below this pivot, 54, we should take it like as a good sell all the way down to here. Moving on to gold miners, which is fantastically going higher. So that was kind of like the level that I was looking for correction, just one candle. Now this is a good level for buy. If it goes down, we should take it as a good buying opportunity because gold miners, I believe, they're going to hit um, to a higher high. Uh, GDX, uh, that was GDX, GDXJ, the same pattern here. It goes higher nicely, getting into resistance. So be careful. Lots of gap, two shadows here, wide range bar breakthrough to the downside. So the lots of sellers are here. Just be patient because tomorrow we should see some kind of like a choppy day as well. AEM, the same pattern here after hours goes higher nicely. It just, AEM is kind of like a, uh, let me go to AEM again. So it goes above this important area, which you can see in all gold miners chart. So this means AEM can break through. Probably the other ones can break through as well. Newmont, the same. So 27 cents up. Not a bad session. This is a consolidation. We need to consolidate here to break through to 39. Franco Nevada go up today. So nicely, $112. Um, we should consolidate. If we see consolidation here, 122 to 128 is coming. 
Gold Barrick goes higher to this white range bar. Again, white, white range bar here breakthrough. So that's why Gold Barrick is down, to, not down, but a candle was not that strong. 19 cents up, uh, not a bad session. XLE, which is energy spider, goes higher. Crude is down. So these ones eventually are going to follow crude as well. So XOP is up today, 91 cents. OH, $6.99, pretty good price action, I should say. This is what, uh, what type of candle I want to see after breakout. It was very, very choppy, sloppy, didn't go anywhere. But today, very good price action, kind of like a surprising for me. Exxon, 60 cents to the upside. It goes to this supply area. And Chevron. It's just optic, not a bad session. Hold off for now, but this is a bearish consolidation for a next drop. I think so. So we will see how it goes. Hope you like this video. Again, if you have any question, please let me know. Put your questions down there. Put your comments down there. What do you think about this? What chart do you want or what type of question you have? That would be great if I can hear from you as well. So have a fantastic evening. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.